in the last class we try to understand uh, what is the meaning of uh, stereographic projection so let me remind you once again that stereographic projection is something this is the case So, if I want to find a point here, say this point is uh, P, then for each point I should have a unique point here. And we, we say that there is a relationship between this point, say if this is Y and this is uh, Xi 2, Xi 3, then uh, I we calculate something that this divided by this is these things divided by these things is equal to these things divided by these things. In different way you can do that I mean this is not a unique way to do the relationship, but the point is that you can find y as a function of xi 1 and xi 2 and when you do that that means for each xi 1 and xi 2 or xi 3 here xi xi 2 and xi 3 because I am not taking x. So, for each value you will have a unique value of y. So, if y tends to infinity this point goes to here in the north pole you can do that I mean this is not a very hard thing to do. Today we will start something important as I mentioned in the last class which is complex functions. So, function real function we know what is the real function. So, let me go back to this function uh, analysis and all these things. So, I have function is something which is rule we have a set of point here which I call the set of point x I apply the rule and as a result I am getting a set of point and the, the rule I call f x and this is y. So, y is f x is the rule and for each point I should have another point here. This is called the domain and this is called the range. So, I will take one point from domain I will apply the uh, apply the relationship or the rule over that and I am getting another point in another domain. So, uh, another uh, which is called it is called codomain or range. So, example is say y is equal to x square I take one x value here I square that and I will get another point here I take another x square that I am getting and if I do that then I will have a relationship between this. So, I will have y I will have x for every x I can plot y here. this is the rule. So, if I plot I will have a parabola. So, no problem with that. If I have a different kind of function I will have different. So, if I have y e to the power x I should have a different kind of function and I can if I plot it will be something like this and so on. So, the point is that I can always plot in real case I can always plot one variable with respect to other. But uh, what happened in case of complex function. So, let us first define what is the meaning of complex function. So, complex function is the same thing that I have a set of point complex point say z this is a set of complex point in the complex plane I have a set of point in a region as I mentioned in the previous class. I apply a rule of that point this is the point in the complex plane set of complex so, that means this is called jet plane this is x and this is y. So, in the jet plane I have a distribution of points and over that particular point I apply the rule exactly the way I apply and as a result I am getting here something as a result I am getting here something. Now, the question is whatever I am getting is also essentially be a complex number. So, 
I called it as W and I can also put these things here but now my plane is changed this complex plane if I write this complex plane as jet plane then this complex plane I should not write the jet plane I should write is as W plane. In the W plane I will have a distribution of point because of the fact I am applying one rule over that and different points are start generating but since these points are again complex points so I should have a real and imaginary axis here like previous but I should not write it as x and y rather I should write it as u and v. So, in sum I will have z equal to x plus i y this is my variable I apply my function f z over that this is the rule I am applying over that as a result I am getting something w which is u plus i v which is again a complex function and this complex function complex uh, uh, quantity this complex quantity I should write in this way. Now if you note that u and v should be function of x and y both. So, it is better to write u x y plus i v x y. There are different kind of function you can imagine. So, this is the first I need to understand what is the rule here or what is the what is the uh, meaning of complex function it is exactly like the real function the real function I have a real value variable and I apply some kind of rule over this real points or real uh, uh, variables and as a result I am getting something which is real and this real thing uh, is governed by something which is called f x, but here I am doing the same thing the logic is same but instead of having x I should have z as my variable which contains two variable x and y. Now, when I apply these things through a rule if z I am getting a new thing which I call w, but interestingly this w is also complex. So, I should write u plus i v where u should be a function of x y and v should be a function of x y as well. Now, let me give you some straightforward example then things will be clear. So, after having a very basic idea about how the complex uh, functions working. So, say f x f z is say z square this. So, my rule is given. So, what is my z x plus i y this is my z. What is my z square? By the way z square is nothing but w. What is z square? z square is x plus i y square which is x square minus y square plus 2 i x y that quantity and that quantity is nothing but u function of x y plus i v function of x y because my w is u plus i v. So, u x y should be corresponding. So, when both the things are equal then I can readily write u of x y is x square minus y square and v of x y is 2 of x y this is the relation. Now, the problem is uh, in the complex plane the problem is you cannot draw anything because two variable are associated with z for these two variable again you have u and v u and v is associated also two variable. So, in the real case there was one variable that is associated with that and you can plot this one variable to another variable here you have two variable associated with z. So, when z is changing essentially two variables are changing when two variables are changing then it is difficult to uh, 
in 2D, it is not possible to draw V and U simultaneously. What you can do that you can fix one value and then plot and then find out the relation. I will do one simple problem. But before doing that, let us try to find out few other functional form also. So this is this. So what is this function of say z minus real part of z. This is also a function. So this function if I write in the xy form, so w is x plus iy and real part of x means it is minus of x, real part of z mean, means it is real part only, so this. So if I write it is just iy, so iy, so that means u of xy here 0, v of xy is y. There are different kind of function you can you can consider. For example, mod of z square minus real say imaginary part of z plus i. This is also a function. Mod of z square means mod of z square means x square plus y square minus imaginary part of this quantity. What is the imaginary part of this quantity? What is the imaginary part of this quantity? So, z plus i is equal to x plus i y plus i. So, x plus i y plus 1. So, real part is this and when I say the imaginary part that means this quantity. So, this quantity is nothing but y plus 1. So, entire function now become a real function. The way I define this, it is maybe a real, it is not necessary that function of z is always gives you a real or always gives you a imaginary. It may be complex and real thing is nothing but a special case of complex function, complex uh, quantity. So, that means here I should write u x y is x square plus y square minus y plus 1 and v x y is 0 because there is no imaginary part associated with this. Okay. So, after having uh, these things, let us go back to that problem to how to define a function. So, let us say this is my function f z is equal to z square. Now, since we are not able to, so it was I do that. So, my u x y was x square uh, minus y square and v x y was 2 x y what I am trying to do that I try to find out for different z how this u and v is related. So, since it is directly it is not possible to draw the variation what we can do is called the mapping, this is called the complex mapping. So, what I will do in this mapping procedure what I will do that my z variable is changing. So, in z plane, I will vary my point real and imaginary which is x and y. This is my z plane and try to find out that if the z point is varying here, how in the w plane things are changing. So, here this is u and this is v and this is w plane and related with the function which is defined here if z is equal to z square. Now, in order to do that as I mentioned I need to change my variable to a single variable. 
so that's why i say x is 1 so i fix my x and y y is very y can vary so that means in the z plane the variation of z with the limit with the restriction y equal to 1 should be this line So, my z is varying over this line in my z plane. So, my z point is varying over this line because y equal to x equal to 1 is my point, x equal to 1 is uh, the restriction, and x equal to 1 is nothing but this point, uh, this line, and over this line my z is changing. So, that means whatever the y value I can think of. So, my z is essentially 1 plus i y. So, there is no restriction of y. So, y can change like this. If my z is changing in this way, what will be the form here in u and v? That is the question. So, the problem is z is changing like this way. I want to find out how it will look like here in w plane. It is called the mapping. So, I am I want to map this particular variation of z with the restriction x equal to 1 so that I can do that. So, here we have a relation. So, I can just put this x equal to 1 here and try to find out what is the relationship between u and v that is all that is the recipe of doing this thing. So, I sh I have x equal to 1 in my hand here what I will do that I will put this condition here when I put this condition here. I will have a relationship between u and v and then I put this relationship. So, u will be if I put x equal to 1, 1 minus y square and my v is if I put, so it will be 2 of y. So, I should have a relationship between u and v and the relationship is u is equal to 1 minus y square if I say it will be v square by 4. This is the relationship between u and v. After having a relationship between x and uh, after putting a value x equal to 1, I have a unique relationship between these two. If I now plot this point, these things, how it look like that is the, that is the answer. So, it seems that when v is equal to 0, when u is equal to 0, v is how much? v is v square by 4 equal to 1 v square is equal to 4. So, that means v is equal to plus minus 2. So, at this point the value of v is here and here which is 2 and 2 this is point 2 this is minus 2. right? And then when v is equal to 0 then u is equal to 1. So, somewhere here this is 1 and it seems to be a parabola. So, simply it will be something like this, it will be something like this. So, this is the mapping of this particular straight line for which I should have a restriction x is equal to 1. Now, when I have a restriction x equal to 1, I should have a straight line for that. That means, this is my variable. Now, my z is not vary over the entire plane rather it is varying just one single line and when, when we have a one single line variation then I can map this to the w plane and try to find out with this relation when u and v are there how u and v is related and I find that the relation. So, this is the one example of mapping. Okay, after having uh, the relationship uh, of mapping, so let us now uh, try to find out uh, something interesting which I already mentioned actually is the limit. I am, I am not sure whether I will able to complete this topic today, but let me first introduce what is the thing. So, concept of limit. So, limit is a well known concept in a real case when you have in the real case say this is my real axis 
one point is x and because of when uh, I have limit that means say limit x tends to x 0 f x is say l. The meaning of this line is that x minus f x minus l will always be less than equal to some quantity delta if my x approaches to x 0 in such a way. So, for every x which is following this relationship that means x minus x 0 is less than a small quantity delta. So, that means for that x if I put this x here then this value will be close to some other value l with the fact that if I take a mod of these things that should be less than delta. So, as if I go to closer and closer this quantity f for every x which is following this epsilon which following this relation I should have additional relation between these two these two things. So, that I will have a f minus l is something less than delta. So, this is the this is the delta epsilon the well known delta epsilon uh, uh, relationship uh, between uh, when we define the limit of that. So, we know these things for real case in in our uh, in our previous courses it, it has been taught very rigorously. So, I am not going to be detail in that. So, I believe all of you are aware of this just this is a uh, recap how the limit is defined. So, now I am going to do the same thing for complex. So, my complex case z is go to z 0 f of z goes to some value say l. In this case also I should have a relationship that f z minus l should be less than delta when z minus z 0 is less than some epsilon. So, I have so z minus z 0 you can understand that this is basically a circle in the neighborhood of z 0. I will have a point here z I am approaching to this point z 0 with the condition that it should be less than these things. Here in w plane when this when I put this function here. So, I will have this in w plane. So, w plane also I have a point l here and my f z or w is such that they will also follow the similar kind of things. So, something like this. So, I am approaching this point z is approaching to z 0 with the limitation that it should be less than some quantity epsilon. As a result of these things in the another plane I should have this quantity which is also approaching to l with the limitation that this minus this mod of this minus this should be less than delta. Okay. This is one thing, but the important thing is approach. let me draw that in a bigger way. So, this is my z 0 point when I am saying z tends to z 0. So, it can approach from this point to this point it can approach this point to this point it can approach this point to this point it can approach this point to this point and so on there are infinite number of way to approach this point as I mentioned in my earlier classes that there are infinite number of way to approach. In real case what happened? So, I want to find out the limit x tends to x 0 f x is equal to I want to find this limit. So, what is the value of limit? First what we choose left hand 
left hand limit that means when I approach from this is my point x 0 when I am approaching from this side to this side it is there first I check second tick left hand limit exist checked right hand limit exist check if these two limits are same so right hand limit is equal to left hand limit is equal to the value of function value of the function at that point if it is true then i we can say that the their limit is there so limit exist but here since the approach is not left hand and right hand all the directions so we are in some trouble so we are not directly we can not say whether it is approaching to this limit or not whether the limit is exist or not so let us take a very straightforward simple example before before the end of this class next class again we will start from this concept so let us try to find out limit uh, z tends to 0 uh, mod of z square divided by z square mod of z square divided by uh, real part of z square say something like this I try to find out the limit at z equal to 0 just give one example then I will uh, show more things. So, what is the case here z mod of z square is how much x square plus y square real part of z square what is z square mind it z is x plus i y what is z square z square is x square minus y square plus 2 i x y when I say real of z square it is x square minus y square this quantity. So, if I put here eventually what I am saying that z tends to 0 which essentially means x tends to 0 and y tends to 0 this quantity is x square plus y square I just put everything in terms of x and y and this quantity real of x square is x square minus y square I have this. So, this is my condition this is my limit I need to find out. So, limit z tends to 0 is essentially means this right. So, now I will do 1 by 1 and check. So, before that let me draw one thing here. this is my 0 point when I say x tends to 0 y tends to 0 I will have several option in my hand one option is this x x is equal to 0 and y approaches to 0 I can go with this this line I put x equal to 0 directly so that my my calculation is simpler and I approach y tends to 0 this is my one path say this is one approach one approach one another approach you can readily understand maybe this I can approach from this side this side what is the condition y is equal to 0 and x approaches to 0 this is approach 2 and I can put any arbitrary direction I can go to 0 from any arbitrary direction. So, say I can approach to this direction 
this direction y where y and x are having a relationship. So, that means y is equal to m x that is a relationship. So, that means y is approaching to 0 and x is approaching to 0 both are approaching to 0 in this case 3 I put it as a special case case 3 both are approaching to 0, but they are maintaining a relationship y equal to m x m is a slope. So, that means through this straight line where m is a slope they are approaching to this point. So, there are three different case where you can apply. So, because I need to check whether the limit exists or not in order to check you need to ensure that whatever the direction you want whatever the direction from which you can go approaches to 0 you will uh, be able to reach this point. So, if I do then you can readily understand for case 1 for case 1 what happened I put x equal to 0 y tends to 0 that means x equal to 0 y tends to 0 gives you what value limit y tends to 0 I will have y square minus y square y square y square will cancel out I will have a limit minus 1. So, I can have in fact a value of the limit case 2 in case 2 y is 0 x is tends to 0. So, if I put y is 0 then limit x tends to 0 here y is 0 here here x is 0 here y is 0. So, y is 0 means this this is going to vanish I will have x square by x square which is plus 1. Readily I find that in two cases in first case the limit gives me minus 1 in the second case the limit gives me plus 1 that means they are not equal. So, that means the limit does not exist from here I can conclude, but interestingly in case 3 you will find something again. So, here both limit x tends to 0 y tends to 0 and if I put that there then what happened the relationship if I put then if I put y is equal to m x square then the it will be x square plus 1 plus m square and in the downstairs it will be x square 1 minus m square. So, x square x square will cancel out I will have a value of the limit which depends on m that means it depends the limit entirely depends on in which direction you are approaching to the point 0 that means this limit does not exist the answer is the limit does not exist. So, here I like to stop because uh, in the next part we will go to more detail about the limit continuity and the derivative which is most important part here. So, before going to the derivative of complex function what is the derivative meaning of derivative of the complex function we need to know what is the meaning of the limit of a complex function and we find that here the major difference between the real case and imaginary case real case and complex case is that in the complex case the approach of a particular point can be in from any direction and since it is in any direction it is difficult to find out uh, the limit, but there are few things through which you can find out whether the limit is exist or not. In the next class again we will start from this concept of limit and find out do some kind of uh, problems related to limit find whether the limit is exist or not and all these things and then go to something called the derivative of a complex function which is much more important here and then try to find out something quite important in the complex analysis which is called the analytic function. What is the definition of analytic function? What is the meaning of analytic function? Maybe in the next class we try to cover this. With this uh, let us stop the class here. So, see you in the next class and thanks for your attention.